Since 1964, 29 missions have succeeded in returning data from Mars, but none has attempted to return samples. Now the U.S. and China are both leading efforts to do so, but recent developments may mean China does it first on this episode of Mars Guy. There's no news from Mars during the two weeks of solar conjunction, so last week I looked back at the results from early in the mission of Perseverance, and this week I'll look forward at what's to come, maybe. Mars sample return has been in the works for decades, but NASA got serious about it with Perseverance, or the Mars 2020 mission as it was originally designated. The data from all of the previous missions have revolutionized our understanding of Mars, but they can't tell us something as basic as how old the rocks are, or as profound as whether they contain ancient microbial life. That's why returning samples is so important, but not just any samples. A range of rock types from different geologic settings is needed to maximize the science. Perseverance is exploring Jezero Crater, a geologically rich site with sedimentary rocks deposited by an ancient river, igneous rocks produced by various volcanic processes, and all of them with some amount of alteration by water, probably from the lake that was there billions of years ago, which offers the possibility of microbes preserved in the rocks if Mars ever had life. Samples brought back from here would offer a new revolution in our understanding of Mars. But getting those samples back is a monumental challenge. The first step is to deliver a rocket. As currently planned, the lander that carries it would be the biggest one ever sent to Mars. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Then Perseverance would deliver its sample tubes to the lander which has a sample transfer arm built by the European Space Agency to put them into a capsule in the rocket. But what if Perseverance gets disabled before reaching the lander? The backup plan is to send two Ingenuity class helicopters with the lander that can fly off to collect the samples already dropped off in a depot on the floor of Jezero Crater. Once all the samples are safely packed into the capsule, a two-stage rocket would be cold-launched, like some missiles used by the military, then hot-fired to reach orbit around Mars. The rocket is too small to fly to Earth, so instead the plan is to send an orbiter in advance to receive the sample capsule from the rocket. That orbiter, built by the European Space Agency, would package up the capsule and fly it back to Earth, where it would literally drop it into a desert in Utah. If you think all that sounds expensive, you're right. An independent review board chartered by NASA concluded that it would cost in the range of $8 to $11 billion, which would require close to a $1 billion per year with two launches in 2030. The U.S. House of Representatives has approved the $950 million in the President's 2024 budget request, but the Senate spending bill only offers $300 million. This gap and the uncertainty it creates has led NASA to pull back on its efforts to develop the Mars Sample Return Program out of concern for the possible major cuts needed if the Senate bill passes. Meanwhile, China is ramping up its efforts to return samples. After its remarkably successful first mission to Mars in 2020, which included an orbiter and a lander with a rover, the Chinese National Space Administration is planning a mission with two launches as soon as 2028, with samples returning to Earth in 2031. An international conference held in April included more details about the science objectives and sampling approaches, which indicate that the Chinese sample return mission will be more than a grab-and-go effort that some had assumed. But the possibility of including a drill, a rover, or a helicopter on this mission certainly adds cost and complexity and 
potential delays that could slip the 2028 launch to the next opportunity in 2030, the same as the NASA ESA mission, assuming no more schedule slips. So at this point, who gets to Mars and back first is still up in the air and in the halls of Congress.